Hi, I'm Courtney Malin, and this is my best lesson for spring 2021. It is a great lesson for students who are online and have minimal materials because you only need a piece of paper, scissors, and some crayons. This lesson is about where dinosaurs lived. So the students are asked, what are some dinosaurs that they know? And they usually come up with a velociraptor, a triceratops, and usually a T-Rex. Sometimes you have a Stegosaurus thrown in there, or if the students are really into dinosaurs, you get a Gigantosaurus or some really specific dinosaurs. The one common feature between all these, or among all these dinosaurs, is they all lived on land. So students tend to mention dinosaurs that lived on land rather than ones that lived in the air or ones that swam in the sea. So dinosaurs lived in different places. They could swim in the sea, they can live on land, or they can fly in the sky. And the one thing that students always think is that um, pterodactyls are dinosaurs, which they're not. They're actually just reptiles. So students are really interested in determining why pterodactyls are not dinosaurs, and if they're not, what dinosaurs actually fly in the sky. So this is the Sea, Land, and Air Dinosaur book. It has a flat for water, a flat for the air, and a flat for the land. And then on this slide, um, this is some instructions on how to fold the sheet of paper. Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to fold your dinosaur flat book. So what we are going to do is take any sheet of paper that you have, it can be lined or it can have no lines, and what we are going to do is fold it in half like this. So you want to fold it hamburger style, not long ways. You want to fold it so it looks like this. And then we are going to take one of our flaps, so either this one or this one, and we want to fold part of that flap down. So you can still see some underneath. Okay, you don't want to fold it all the way down, you want to fold it so that you can still see some of the paper underneath. And then you'll end up with three sections, so you have one, two, three. After the students fold their sheet of paper, they're asked to cut their sheet of paper. And what's really great about this lesson is that the students do not need scissors necessarily. So if they don't have scissors, they can still complete the lesson. They can still use um, crayons or markers or some other writing utensil to fill in the clouds and the water that you cut, which is a really big thing because a lot of these elementary schoolers lose their supplies. Um, or if they're only at home, they can't pick up supplies from the school because they're dependent on their parents. And if their parents don't pick up those supplies, then they sort of miss out on a lot of lessons. Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to cut your piece of paper. If you do not have scissors, that is okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this top flap right here, and we are going to cut it to look like waves or water. So you can either do a nice little squiggly pattern, or if you know how to do some water wave peaks, then you can do that as well. And then after we get done with that, we're going to take the second flap right here, and we are going to make it into clouds. So you can cut your clouds however you want, but just make sure you're not cutting off too much because you're going to have to draw something on that flap. So we're just going to go ahead and cut our clouds. We're going to make nice fluffy clouds for our dinosaurs to fly on. And then once we are done with that, it should look something like this. So you'll have waves on top and clouds in your second flap. So after the students cut their sheet of paper, then we start making our dinosaur flip book. So on the flap with the waves, so that's the top flap, the students are asked to draw their own sea dinosaur or trace this dinosaur in the top flap. So a lot of students actually like to use their computer screen and they draw the dinosaur on their computer screen um, very lightly so they don't ruin their computer screen, but just so they have a starting point for drawing. And then after that, we go into the Spinosaurus. So the Spinosaurus is a dinosaur that was originally thought to only be on land, but we've recently discovered that there are fins on this dinosaur. And of course, the students aren't required to remember this because they are in elementary school, but they usually think it's pretty cool especially some of the dinosaur um, 
lovers in the elementary school who didn't know that the Spinosaurus actually could swim. So a lot of them were really, really excited about that because they did not know this. And then we move on to the air dinosaur. So this one is traced on the middle flap where the students cut their clouds. And the students usually like to draw their own um, just because it's a lot of fun to make a dinosaur that would fly. And then this is, of course, the flying dinosaur, it's Archaeopteryx. And that is a very large word. A lot of elementary schoolers can't pronounce it, but they think it's cool regardless. And you'll see more of a reason why they think it's so cool at the end. So this is the last section of the dinosaur flipbook. It is the land dinosaur and students are told that they can draw whatever dinosaur that they want. So they don't have to draw a Brachiosaurus, they could draw a Stegosaurus, a T-Rex, whatever dinosaur that they really want to draw. And of course, I drew a Brachiosaurus. And most students know about this dinosaur since it has a really long neck and it's featured a lot in Jurassic Park and Jurassic World and a lot of cartoons like Dinosaur Train. And then after that, they're instructed to color their dinosaurs and decorate them while they watch this video. Hundreds of families share their stories with us every year. Today's carnivorous question is brought to us by Jurassic World. Why are there no more dinosaurs left on Earth today? Or are there? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. About 65 and a half million years ago, there was a massive extinction of dinosaurs all across the globe. It's known as the Cretaceous Tertiary Extinction Event, or KT Event. An enormous six mile wide asteroid crashed down to Earth and left a crater over 110 miles long at the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. It had such a catastrophic impact on Earth's climate that almost every living thing on the planet went extinct. The asteroid likely led to earthquakes, fireballs, wildfires, tidal waves, tsunamis, and all sorts of other problems. It sent massive amounts of dust, dirt, gas, and pulverized rock high into the atmosphere, blanketing the entire planet in a dark, ashy cloud. This blocked sunlight, plummeting the planet into a frigid darkness. The dark cloud of ash and gas trapped in heat, and over time, Earth's temperature actually rose higher than it was even before the asteroid crashed. The impact of the asteroid was much stronger than any man-made bomb ever detonated, and it killed off nearly every dinosaur on Earth. But not every dinosaur. Just like Blue manages to survive the volcano and make it to the mainland in Jurassic World, the KT event led to a mass extinction of life on Earth, but it didn't off everything. All of these cataclysmic changes to the climate were deadly for the dinosaurs, but the birds remained. That's right! About 80 million years before dinosaurs went extinct, birds evolved from a small group of meat-eating dinosaurs called theropods, who are relatives of the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex. Okay, so birds managed to mostly survive the TK event, and they evolved directly from dinosaurs, but how did they survive the mass extinction? Well, experts can't say for certain, but they do believe the answer likely has to do with their size, diet, and most importantly, ability to fly. But whatever the reason for their survival, one thing's for sure. There definitely are still dinosaurs roaming the Earth, or at least soaring through the skies. So the best thing about that lesson, part of the lesson, is that students get really excited um, when they realize that there are dinosaurs that are still alive and still in existence. And especially when you tell them that whenever they eat chicken, that they are eating dinosaurs. So if they ever have chicken, they're eating an actual dinosaur. And that's when they get that sort of aha moment of this is how this connects. So we see these really cool creatures in the past in we think that they all went away, they are all went extinct um, because of a meteorite, but what they realize is that a lot of them actually survive and they live as birds. So falcons are 
derived specifically from velociraptors, which is really, really cool. And velociraptors evolved to um, sort of become more like ostriches and eventually fly. And so when you tell these students all these different things, um, they remember that for a long time and they still discuss it with me. Um, they still ask me uh, about uh, chicken eggs and if the chicken eggs are considered baby dinosaurs. Um, so whenever they see me, they have this moment of remembering uh, about how dinosaurs are actually birds. So that is my best lesson for 2021. I hope you enjoyed it.